Welcome everyone to another uh, 51st live session of uh, Dogspot.in. We have with us Dr. Anish Pillay from Farmina Pet Foods uh, today. He is uh, a wet dermatologist by profession and qualification who is now a wet manager for Asia Pacific uh, for Farmina Pet Foods. Uh, he's had a good career spanning uh, a, over a decade uh with uh, multiple uh, large pet food brands across the industry and uh, we will be discussing today about uh diet uh influence of diet over skin and coat condition of the dogs and uh you know food allergies how to identify food allergies and what are the factors that lead to it and uh, everything around food allergies if time permits we should also be touching upon uh, food supplements and uh, any specific reasons for food supplements, environmental factors that can affect food supplements, and so on and so forth. Uh, most of the time, as I understand from uh, Dr. Anish, it is not uh, deficiency in uh, food supplements that has been causing problems around dogs in India. It is, in fact, the excess of it in their diets and the excess of supplements uh, given to them. So, uh, Dr. Anish, over to you. Hi. Thank you, Chariyan, so, for the introduction. Yeah. So um, I, we would start by talking about the in influence of a diet in uh, skin and coat care of a dog. Uh, could you briefly tell us about, uh, you know, what role does it play and uh, what is, uh, uh, you know, what reflects in the skin and coat of the dog? Uh, actually, uh, food is everything. I can. I will always start saying that food is everything. Okay. So, uh, uh, for example, there are we say that all nutrients are important for the skin and coat cells. Okay. But there are some major nutrients uh, which are mm -hmm. most important, like okay. uh, proteins, mm -hmm. fats, uh, mm -hmm. minerals. I mean, in minerals, you can say it as uh, zinc, mm -hmm. copper, mm -hmm. and uh, vitamin A and vitamin E. Okay. See, these are the these are the some nutrients which are very important. For example. Okay. Mm -hmm. um we, for a, if you if you compare a human skin or a dog skin there is always a turnover okay mm -hmm. there is always a processing which happens on the skin okay. and for every wear and tear you we need proteins okay and and the coat of a, a dog it it is almost 95 percentage of proteins mm -hmm. especially in that in particular if you want to say we can say it is sulfur Sulfur containing amino acids. Amino acids is nothing but a smaller portion of a protein. Many amino okay. acids combine together to form a protein. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. sulfur containing amino acids uh, like uh, cysteine, methionine, these are very important for the uh, okay. coat, of a, coat of a skin. Similarly, so before, if you see, before yeah, one before, second. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, fat is also the most important uh, nutrient for skin and coat because every cells they are interconnected by the fats which prevents the entry of uh, external agents into the skin right so fat is also an important right uh, since you spoke about protein can we just quickly discuss animal protein versus plant protein and how it is processed by and uh, dogs mm, actually if you see uh, we should not say it as protein we can uh, Broadly term it as amino acids. Okay. If you look at the, if you compare the amino acids of a dog, uh, so of an animal source and a plant source, mm -hmm. the bioavailability. Bioavailability means how much it can digest and how digest. much yeah. and how much it can absorb and how much the body can use. That is called right. as bioavailability. The mm -hmm. bioavailability of animal source proteins are more compared to that of vegetable source proteins. Mm -hmm. Which means that uh, uh, animals have a limited capacity to digest a uh, plant source protein. For example, I can say egg, right. it, the bioavailability is 100. If you eat 100 grams, 100 grams of protein will go to the uh, body. Right. Similarly, if you take any meat, it is 80. But mm -hmm. if you take uh, plants, for example, the top uh, on the top most, uh, is, uh, or top most is quinoa. It is mm -hmm. a plant source, highest uh, plant source bioavailability containing plant source protein. Mm -hmm. The percentage is 75. Okay. 
Okay. So, so if I, we I, I, leave I, I, aside, uh, you know, uh, things that are not very commonly available here, quinoa is of course available probably in specialty yeah. human stores. So but I think say, uh, typically the plant uh, protein that people are referring to here is dal. Yeah, we can say it as dal, we can say it as uh, rice, maize. Right. These are the common proteins which we use in India. Right. So, in their uh, bioavailability will be around 50 to 60. Okay. But uh, and the most important apart, and, the most, uh, and the most important part is that they lack that sulfur containing amino acid, which is okay. important for the uh, uh, hair coat. For the hair coat. So the can so if I were to just summarize it, one apart from the quantity or uh, of a protein, the quality of protein is also very different. Definitely. Is that how yes. we should? Okay. Yes. And uh, if we look at plant-based food and um, you know, if I a plant-based protein versus if I compare it with the animal-based protein, uh, okay. would there be also a difference in fat content directly? There will be fat, uh, a higher percentage of fat in animal origin proteins Definitely. because it's not really isolated versus... Definitely. Definitely. So in a, in a plant-based... Plant -based protein, starch particles would be on a higher end compared to right. that of animal. Yeah. Is there any uh, plant-based fat source that uh, is commonly available? Plants based, you can say, we can say many fatty acids like uh, flaxseed oil, linseed oil. These are some uh, commonly used fa uh, fats in the pet food industry. Okay. Uh, and they are very good sources of omega-3 fatty acids. Apart from this, uh, we use uh, sunflower oil, soya okay. oil. They are good sources of omega-6 fatty acids. Okay. Both these omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are important for the uh, right. skin, uh, uh, maintaining the skin and coat. Okay. So from a perspective of, uh, you know, people uh, uh, feeding homemade food uh, and especially vegetarians who feed homemade food, uh, you would say that, uh, you know, uh, dal versus all these oils put together should provide a certain quantity and maybe not as good, but some quality of protein and fat is, uh, you know, what is your observation on that? Do you see that the quality of skin and coat on these dogs would be affected? Um, see, this is a, actually uh, a debate in Indian in the Indian market. Actually. Okay. As a veterinarian, I always uh, tell that, of course, you can make a homemade diet. But okay. the problem is that you would never know how much proteins you have added, how much fat is there in the diet, how much minerals you have added in the diet. So mm -hmm. of, obviously you have to depend on other supplements. Again, there is a problem. You don't know how much supplement was earlier within the, with that diet and how much you are giving, how much extra you are feeding. So right. I can definitely say that the skin and coat of a uh, if you compare a group of pets with uh, pet food and a group of pets with a uh, homemade diet and especially vegetarian diets, definitely I will say that uh, the uh, dogs with pet food will be uh, have a better will have a better skin and coat. Okay. Yeah. Practic practically, I have probably seen some exceptions, but yes, we will go with that. There so, are, of course, there are always exceptions. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so we've kind of, uh, you know, inter uh, introduced ourselves to this particular topic. Uh, and uh, I think one of the largest issues that everyone would like to hear about, and I think something that we will focus on in this discussion would be on and around food allergies. Yeah. So could you take us through what kind of food allergies are typically seen around in dogs? How do we identify them and what can be the course of action? And is there a possibility of kind of identifying uh, or isolating these food uh, food allergies? Mm, yeah. So, so actually, I think we'll I start, start with identifying. Uh, no, no. Uh, first, I will start with uh, what is food allergy. Okay. Right. Okay. So actually, um, food is something which is very important for our survival, for a pet survival. So food is a foreign particle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in our body, whenever a bacteria enters our body, an antibody is formed. That is that is how we uh, how we are getting protected. Okay. So similarly, food is also a foreign particle. So but when it enters the stomach, it gets digested and it gets converted into a form in such a way that the uh, antibodies are not produced against it. Okay. 
तो दैट इज हाउ इट प्रिवेंट्स एलर्जी बट इन सम टाइम्स कभी कभी क्या होता है कि बिकॉज ऑफ सम एलर्जी बिकॉज ऑफ सम डाइजेस्टिव इश्यूज और बिकॉज ऑफ सम एक्स रीजन दीज प्रोटीन पार्टिकल्स आर नॉट डाइजेस्टेड प्रॉपरली एंड दे वेन देर आर लार्जर साइजेस ऑफ प्रोटीन ओके द अवर एंटीबॉडी द पिथ्स एंटीबॉडी will identify that it has a foreign body and okay. it will produce and it will produces it will produce a response mm-hmm. that is called as allergy that is food okay. allergy mm-hmm. so usually what happens uh, food allergy is something which is common in most of the pets so we had a study at our college in madras veterinary college where we uh, where we have uh, done a research which says that around 80% of the cases in india they have food allergy okay okay so uh, what happens in uh, in food allergy see food allergy is uh, because of some proteins mm-hmm. okay so in india the most common allergens in dogs mm-hmm. they are first one is chicken okay beef mm-hmm. globally it is beef but in india it is chicken first mm-hmm. chicken beef then comes uh, wheat and mm-hmm. dairy products Okay. These are so the most common. May I just pause you right there and say that chicken is the most used component in dog food globally. Yes. And uh, like you said, that in India, the majority of the allergies that you see in dogs are to chicken. Yes. Is there a particular reason to this, and is this a new phenomena? Do I really feel if it will I be wrong in if I say that there are more cases of dogs being allergic seen these days than before? Hmm. It actually. it depends on see uh, there are uh, it is not because of some particular reason but the thing is that there are many reasons there are many reasons for example the period when uh, the pet was first introduced with a pet food or mm-hmm. with a raw diet okay mm-hmm. so th- there are some other reasons but mm-hmm. uh, the most problem in india is that many of the uh, pet food many of the uh, pets they are feed they are on uh, chicken that is the major reason for the chicken allergy mm. sorry okay and period major major pets okay they mm-hmm. are on on chicken okay. and that is the reason for a chicken allergy see uh, you, it is not something related to any pet food because if you take in india only 4% of the pets are on pet food okay mostly they most of them are on uh, uh, homemade diets or right. they are on one time meal on a pet food so there are right. many other reasons mm mm-hmm. okay okay uh, no so can you clarify it again how how does this impact so most of the pets being on chicken how does it make them allergic to chicken see uh, there is a, there is a uh, protein called as chicken albumin chicken okay. serum albumin okay. okay so when a pet is exposed continuously in some pets right. when they are exposed continuously it causes allergy for example there are two types of allergy in some pets for some pet foods that actually there are two types of allergy one is immediate immediate hypersensitivity whenever mm-hmm. it eats it, it may vomit or it may go uh, do a loose motion or it may show a swelling it right. may show a red okay that is one thing and mm-hmm. second thing is uh, delayed hypersensitivity which means mm-hmm. on a longer exposure it mm-hmm. may cause allergy so uh, this protein chicken serum albumin mm-hmm. so on low on long exposure of this particular protein it may cause allergy so which means to say that if you actually give them mixed sources of protein which means you do mixed meat food uh, or you rotate the kind of meat that is used in the food we can avoid this sort of analogy is that what you're saying and no it is i am not saying like that because mm-hmm. here uh, actually what happens uh, we should not also uh, rotate the meat or rotate the food because mm-hmm. uh, the, the large intestine has some bacteria large intestine okay. of a pet has some bacteria they have mm-hmm. both good bacteria and bad, bad bacteria mm-hmm. when and these good bacteria uh, they are di- very different from that of our human being for mm-hmm. human being it is called as uh, advanced we okay. can digest we can digest anything but in case of pets they are targeted we call it as targeted that's why in every pet food they used to say that always uh, whenever you change a food you take 7 to 10 days okay, okay. 
so it is not ideal to rotate a pet food also you have to if see some dogs may get adjusted to one particular food you have to continue with that but for example there are now pet brands which come out with so many different flavors so you have chicken diet you have uh, mutton diet you have salmon you have norwegian salmon or all kind of mixes and you know sometimes there are also dog food brands who recommend that oh, you can give you know each flavor for different days of the week or each flavor for a week so how does that work so actually that is not uh, there is no research or there is no paper on that that you have to give different flavor or different uh, a variety of meat every day so uh, we, there is no paper on that as but is there any paper uh, on uniform uh, the same feed being fed every day yes yes there See, are many papers there are many there are many papers get an animal a dog in its natural habitat the dog mm -hmm. is never going to find uh, the same kind of food every day every meal and the yeah, dog we, we believe that we be we be, uh, we we believe that uh, cat has ever, uh, came from the grey wolf but the thing is that over over the period of time okay there are many things which have changed in the metabolism of a dog also mm -hmm. okay so see earlier the, we say that uh, uh, grey wolf they used to they, they cannot digest carbohydrates but we, nowadays we can say that 30% of the uh, energy comes from carbohydrate in a okay. in a dog Okay. okay, so that is that is how a cat has evolved from its ancestor. A dog okay. has evolved from an ancestor. Just for the benefit of our viewers, I can see a lot of questions coming up. We will be coming to your questions. I just want to make sure that there is in, enough introduction done, and we touch upon all the topics so that all the questions yes, yes. come out, and we yeah. we could just come back to all your questions. So just stay tuned, and we will get to uh, specific questions that you have and uh, the details of that. Um, yeah. So coming back to it, uh, continue, please. Uh. Uh, and for example, uh, I have told about dog. In mm -hmm. cat, the common mm -hmm. allergen first is fish. Okay. Fish, then chicken, then beef, and then wheat, and then dairy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how does this uh, manifest in dogs? For example, if we are looking at, uh, you know, what are the common signs of food allergies? What are you to look for, and how serious can this get? See, uh, there are two types of signs. One is uh, dermatological, and one is non-dermatological. Mm -hmm. Whenever there is a dermatological sign, first thing we see is uh, pruritus, which means itching, severe okay. itching. Okay. Okay. And and this itching uh, will uh, will not be controlled until we diagnose the disease and uh, until we cure it okay. until we remove that particular allergen from the diet mm -hmm. okay so for some period of time you can um, control it by giving some corticosteroids like uh, prednisolone or etc but once but you is remove that really it, necessary is that it does that make sense really which one uh, at a particular control. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, at a, at a particular uh, dose, you can control. That is for the quality of life of that particular pet parent, not for the pet. Okay, yeah. Okay. And that is a, also, I would say, a very temporary solution. Temporary solution. So right. that's what I, I wanted to suggest. And so the uh, pruritus is the first uh, thing. And most common symptoms which we use uh, ear itching. Mm -hmm. And second, then is uh, on the perianal uh, side, there would be swelling or there would be scratching. Okay. Okay. And similarly, there would be, uh, there may be hair loss, okay. there may be redness. And, but most of the time, uh, it is uh, commonly seen along with secondary bacterial infections or fungal infections. Right. Okay. And in cats, uh, there is a peculiarity. Most of the skin allergies, they can be seen on the head and neck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes there would be symmetrical uh, alopecia. Alopecia means loss of hair. Symmetrical. Okay. Both sides, there would be similar uh, fashioned okay. hair loss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but pruritus is the most common thing. And apart from this, in 25% um, of the cases, it there will be uh, diarrhea okay. or, vom or vomiting. Okay, so this, uh, this is also a common symptom. Apart right. from this, very rarely we can see rhinitis or conjunctivitis. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, having said this now, uh, my question is again, uh, uh, 
we discussed about chicken being the largest or the biggest portion of allergen in India, and almost all dog foods are contain chicken majority in India. I don't think I think all meat uh, source of protein in Indian dog food is all chicken. Uh, now, uh, even if you look at uh, people who feed uh, you know home cooked meals, majority of that is also chicken. Uh, mm. And I, I was discussing with you the case of one of my dogs who cannot eat home cooked chicken, but she can eat any dog food with any kind of chicken in it. How do you, uh, you know, explain this? So does that mean that? Yeah. See, uh, for this, I will tell you that the uh, conformation of the protein, the size of the protein, the shape of the protein, these are the major factors for this allergy. Mm -hmm. What happens? Uh, a raw protein. The, mm -hmm. In a raw protein, when you give a raw chicken, mm -hmm. the conformation right. of the protein is entirely different. Okay. And when you cook a pro, uh, when you cook a chicken, the conformation mm -hmm. of the protein is something different. And okay. when you extrude, when you manufacture a pet food, the conformation mm -hmm. of the protein is going to be different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whenever you make a pet food, so in pet foods there are uh, there are certain laws, the size mm -hmm. of the protein, everything. There are certain laws. So the size of the proteins would be very small compared okay. to that of a home home cooked one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so very rarely uh, a home cooked, uh, pro, uh, very rarely a pet on a pet food mm -hmm. can have a uh, skin allergy. But okay. the chances of getting skin allergy when you give a raw chicken or a homemade chicken would be more when you compared to that of a to give a chick, uh, chicken based pet food. Okay. Understood. So okay. that, that is the, that is the major reason. So in your product portfolio, do you have any hypoallergenic dog foods? Yes, we have. Uh, so we what have. is the difference between a hypoallergenic dog food and a regular dog food? See, uh, hypoallergenic is a term which vary with company to company. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. we can say a specialized diet using hydrolyzed proteins. Okay. For example, uh, when I told you uh, size of the protein is the matter. Okay. Right. So just as we uh, calibrate weight in kgs similarly mm -hmm. you can calibrate size of a protein in a unit called as dalton okay dalton mm -hmm. so what happens any proteins which have size more than 10 to 40 10 mm -hmm. to 40 they okay. are they are more prone of producing allergy okay okay so in hydrolyzed diets we we have we have a hydrolyzed diet called as wet life ultra hypo mm -hmm. ultra hypo where we have reduced the protein size mm -hmm. and the size of the protein for dog it is 6000 dalton mm -hmm. okay and for cats it is 3000 dalton it is okay. so small so that the anti uh, anti antibodies cannot recognize it as an antigen okay okay so okay. and these hydrolytes diets play a major role in so these finding are stealth, stealth proteins in their food. Uh, what stealth protein? Means? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, proteins that are going as stealth, like not oh. so, you know, identifiable by these uh, you know <laughs> antibodies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And okay. and they are easily absorbable. That is the okay. major part. They okay. don't need any uh, requirement of action of any digestive enzymes. They can okay. be easily absorbed. And okay. they will not produce any allergy. All right. So I think uh, theoretically, we kind of get the picture. You make it really small, it just goes unobserved and it, it just gets so the job is, done. This, this is very important as a pet parent to understand. So whenever we have a skin disease, the first thing which we should do is if it is because. We can hear you. Yeah. So if there is any allergy, if there mm -hmm. is an allergy and if a uh, vet finds that there is a food allergy, first step to do is that you have to step on a hydrolyzed diet and you have to subside the symptoms. Okay. And then you have to identify, it is for eight weeks. You have okay. to follow yeah. this diet for eight weeks minimum. The okay. maximum period is 12 weeks, eight to okay. 12 weeks. And no, so the, is all food, uh, all dry dog food commercially available? Does it carry hydrolyzed proteins or no, not no, all? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. These are specialized diets and the, uh, it requires uh, uh, surveillance of by a veterinarian. So, a veterinarian okay. should prescribe this to purchase. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that's what I am saying. It is important to diagnose. It helps in diagnosing and it also uh, supports in recovery and it is also a treatment for skin allergy. Okay. 
so yeah. uh, i think we will have questions around uh, you know eggs for dogs and so on and so forth i think a lot of dog food contains eggs already how much of eggs is it is is typically a portion into a daily ration of a dog for example if there is a dog which has to eat about 200 grams of dog food what kind of proportionate quality quantity of eggs fall into 200 grams of any commercial dog food or any of your food in your range mm, see it is very difficult to uh, for me to tell how much eggs or how much uh, th that is very difficult because uh, every time the proportion of egg will be different okay yeah, different it will be different in different foods and it depends upon the food which we use okay but in I, your opinion how safe but, is uh, egg? yeah and no, yeah i will continue. let me finish this yeah. but i can i can uh, but i can tell you that uh, for normal maintenance of a skin uh, mm -hmm. the minimum requirement of protein is around 25 to 30% of dry matter among okay. in dry matter 25 to 30% for dog and okay. around 35 to 40% in case of dog, uh, cat cat okay and and when there is a skin allergy the mm -hmm. level of protein in the diet will go down okay it will, it will be minimum 18 percentage uh, per dry uh, in a dry matter for dog mm -hmm. and around 25 to 30 percentage for cats okay. but the difference is the amount the proteins which we use for specialized cases like in uh, foods for skin diseases we mm -hmm. use uh, proteins which are easily digestible which have high biological value and which most of the time originates it, from animal source which, which uh, animal source uh, which has high biological value because okay. you are going to reduce the amount of proteins uh -huh. but the biological value should be high could you and give an example yeah definitely i will you. Yeah. let me finish this yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, for example most of the time there will be only one uh, it would be a single animal source protein okay, uh -huh. okay. and similarly the fats also would be uh, from a single animal source for example in uh, we have a product called as wet life hypoallergenic mm -hmm. hypoallergenic okay fish okay. and potato is the product's name hypoallergenic fish and potato so where we use only uh, the protein only comes from the fish okay okay and uh, the carbohydrate source is only potato okay. and the fat source is only fish oil okay single protein single fat single carbohydrate mm -hmm. so uh, th that is how uh, we should uh, formulate Okay, so if we were to uh, now again come back to eggs and dogs, and I think a lot of questions will be coming to us from a perspective of dogs which are fed home cooked meals as well. Uh, mm -hmm. In your opinion, how many eggs should be okay for a dog? Uh, you know, I mean, of course, it is uh, considering the mix of uh, other things that are fed to the dog. But, you know, like I was mentioning, there are dogs who like to have a boiled egg in their dry food because it kind of improves palatability for them or generates more interest for them and things like that so what is your opinion on eggs and what do you think eggs contribute and is there any side effects or harmful effects that eggs can bring about definitely see eggs are a very good source of protein with mm -hmm. high, highest biological value it is a very okay. rich source of calcium okay calcium and phosphorus it is mm -hmm. uh, definitely a very good source of all nutrients mm -hmm. but the problem is the uh, feeding uh, egg generally don't create any problems, but uh, pro the dogs which are allergic to chicken, mm -hmm. I told you that chicken serum albumin, it is also right. present in the case of egg. Okay. So uh, a dog which is allergic to chicken will also be definitely allergic to egg. Mm -hmm. And second thing is that uh, when if you are giving a balanced food, uh, balanced pet food, there is mm -hmm. no need to give additional egg. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the problem uh, occurs when you are uh, giving a home homemade diet because you don't uh, really know that uh, how much protein is going. How yeah. much so let us say it is an empty plate where you start with the first egg. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So how many so, eggs is it okay for a dog to eat? So uh, let's say, for example, especially in vegetarian households, uh, you know, who are comfortable feeding, uh, you know, just animal protein, uh, not animal protein, uh, plant based protein. So they are essentially feeding dal, rice and let's say adding eggs to it. How many mm -hmm. eggs is it okay for a dog to have in a day in your opinion? I am against this concept that uh, we, we should give all these things because it is not a balanced diet. Okay. What is the imbalance that you see in there? So, 
so you really don't know we really don't know that how much protein is going into that particular uh, right. pet how much fat is going how much acid minerals are you are giving how many fatty acids right. is going there so it is actually we it is see if you are a nutritionist if you have done if you know how to formulate a diet you can do not a right. problem but it is always difficult for a uh, normal pet parent to uh, give uh, formulate a homemade recipe for okay. a all right so yeah. uh, we will r- uh, run away from this topic to a quick another question uh, you know we keep hearing prebiotics and probiotics what is the difference between the two see it's a very very good question and uh, this is going to be the future of pet food industry okay, okay. see uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, in the large intestine see if you look at the digestive system of a, a dog Mm-hmm. they are they have mouth they have a uh, foot pipe stomach mm-hmm. small intestine and a large intestine mm-hmm. in the stomach and small intestine there are acids for digestion mm-hmm. okay acids for digestion in the large intestine there are uh, bacteria for digestion microbes mm-hmm. okay okay there are two types of microbes one is good bacteria and one is pathogenic bacteria bad mm-hmm. bacteria okay so when the good bacteria is more the digestion is very good and the motion is also very good mm-hmm. when the bad bacteria is more there is a, a, there may be loose motion there may be flatulence gas formation mm-hmm. yeah, floating yeah. yeah so uh, actually whatever we eat we are also we also need to feed the bacteria yeah. the good bacteria when you right. give food to that good bacteria it will multiply okay right. so in human beings there are two options for example we eat lot we eat lot of greens okay okay so this is called as prebiotic okay okay food for the bacteria is called as prebiotic okay and if we supplement the, the live bacteria that is called as probiotic okay. example yogurt curd which we use right right they are live bacteria and this this is going to be the future why it means uh, for any treatment in future everything depends upon this microbial flora right so uh, there are a lot of microbial flora available in small pouches and everything right now which we consume as humans uh, hmm. do you see that being used uh, so probiotic you're saying will play a big role in dog uh, food in the future is it no probiotic will not play because it is uh, impossible to add probiotics in any pet food because in its uh, dry form yeah we cannot use because it is a it is a live bacteria and right. whenever uh, whenever a pet food is manufactured it is manufactured at 100 to 150 degrees celsius right. so they will die okay so oh, it is always prebiotic no so i'm saying probiotic as a supplement would you do you see that uh, playing a role in uh, the dog uh, in the pet scene maybe but okay. uh, but there are very limited uh, the research papers available on mm-hmm. the uh, probiotics which are available in india okay all right yeah. so we have we'll take one a couple of questions now before we move forward uh we have a question on what parts of chicken is used in dog foods in making of kibbles see it varies uh, on very uh, depending on the dog food brand okay, okay. Mm-hmm. for example uh, there are uh, some food brands uh, which claim only they use fresh chicken okay okay so where they use only the muscle parts mm-hmm. okay in some uh, some they say chicken by products okay so by products means it may include feathers it may include it can include uh, the leg part so it may include the giblets mm-hmm. okay, lung intestine etc okay right. and some uh, some pet food companies claim as chicken meal okay. they are powdered form of chicken right yeah so these are the various uh, uh, source of chicken as the ingredients okay so depending on what kind of chicken is being used is there still a quality difference in the kind of protein that it delivers definitely it will be okay so between a chicken meal and a chicken breast obviously there is a difference definitely definitely there is a difference and there are certain laws for that okay so okay so the loss means uh, how much uh, fi- moisture should be in this particular ingredient how much uh, okay. protein should be there how what should be the microbiological wa- what mi- what should be the microbiological value in the particular chicken which you use as an ingredient 
So okay. there are such uh, so it depends on that. So before we get into uh, dermatological issues and skin and coat issues, uh, I will take one question here. How is soya as a plant protein? See, soya is a very good source of uh, protein. Uh, the biological value is around uh, 70 to 72. Mm -hmm. But the biggest problem is that in recent days, because of over usage, uh, soya, mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that uh, it has shown some reactions to some pets. To okay. some pets, not all pets. Uh, okay. It has uh, it has shown some allergies. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I think we will jump into a question on this. Uh, so my f dog frequently suffers from mild atopic dermatitis. Can you suggest some must-haves and also something that should be avoided? See, uh, atopic dermatitis. Uh, it every it depends upon the. So uh, this uh, condition depends upon the treatment. Okay. Definitely, this dog will be on a cyclosporin treatment, I believe. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, Could you just will, briefly, will, for the benefit of the viewers, explain okay. what atopic dermatitis is and then so, we can... Okay, okay. okay. Uh, actually, uh, in human beings, if we yeah. have any allergy to environment, for example, whenever there is a climate change, okay. or, whenever, when, or whenever we used to clean a uh, uh, bookshelf, old mm. bookshelf, okay, mm -hmm. So we always used to uh, show respiratory symptoms mm. like uh, sneezing, uh, coughing, etc. But mm -hmm. in case of dogs, every time they it reflects on the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, it might be because of any external allergy. It might be because of a pollen. It might be because of some dust. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, seasonal. They they are mostly seasonal. Okay. okay. So, but the problem is that it will recur, recur, recur. Okay. It will get cured and again it will recur. It will get cured again. It will recur. So how, how does happens, what, what does what? how does it manifest as what what does atopic dermatitis look like? It will look exactly like food allergy. Okay, so it, it is, can be swelling, it can be rashes, it can be itching, it can be everything. Severe itching. Okay. The difficulty the difficulty with uh, uh, dermatology is that you can identify all pathogens like if it is a tick, if it is a mite, if it is a fungus, if it is because of bacteria, you can identify that. But it is very difficult to uh, differentially diagnose atopy and food allergy. Mm -hmm. And that's why every time for atopy, a veterinarian will always recommend some hydrolyzed diet. Okay, just to avoid the uh, situation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, we are discussing a uh, very interesting topic. Uh, so, I would, I, would, I, would, I would like to add one more thing. Uh, yeah. she, she should uh, give some pet food which should have a high amount of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Because okay. whenever there is an atopy, whenever there is an environment, atopy is otherwise called as environmental allergy. Whenever okay. there is an environmental allergy, the fat, fat layers of the skin will get disturbed. So, okay. it, the skin is like this. So in between there is fat. Okay. So what happens when there is an atopy? This fatty layer will be disturbed, and the pollen will slowly go inside. Right, right, right. Okay. The uh, allergen will go inside, and it will produce allergy. So you have to include more of a omega three fat. fatty acid. Yeah, more okay. fat. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I just want to request viewers to share this conversation so that you know it can be to the benefit of a lot more people to come in and uh, be part of this. Uh, back to uh, this discussion again. Um, so, what is omega-3 and omega-6? What are the differences? And uh, I think one of the most uh, popular supplements that is being used in India or advised by doctors in India is also an omega-3, omega-6 product, you know, to supplement, to make your coat much nicer. How does it work? Can it be continued? I see a lot of people giving it continuously for the life of the dog. Is that recommended? And, uh, you know, what do you say about that? Actually, uh, omega-3 and omega-6 are poly, we say it as polyunsaturated fatty acids. It is an essential fatty acid, which means body cannot produce that fats. So it okay. has to be supplemented in the form of food. Okay. okay. So this omega-6 fatty acids, is important to maintain a normal skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, for, for example, this omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are present in the skin cell. Okay. Whenever there, whenever there is an infection, this omega-6, whenever there is an allergen enters or whenever a bacterial infestation comes, this omega-6 will show the inflammation. That okay. is the 
omega 6 is the reason why there is a scratching okay okay it it, it is normally protect it is trying to protect the skin all right and this omega 3 comes in the way of treatment okay so omega 3 is something which prevents inflammation which prevents scratching okay and that is why uh, the sub- supplements which we feed omega 3 omega 6 fatty acids mm-hmm. so uh, you can see that there is a ratio which we should maintain for normal skin ratio of omega 6 is to omega 3 is 5 is to 1 to 10 is to 1 okay normal but mm-hmm. in case of skin diseases the ratio will be altered we will increase we have to increase the omega increase 3 omega 3 okay uh, because you have to prevent the inflammation prevent it so uh, but as a supplement when you using this is it okay to continue feeding the dog continuously for the life of the dog or is it you need to stop it after a point in time or feed it intermittently maybe feed for a week and then come back after a whole month and feed for another week actually there is no requirement to feed it continuously for a lifelong of a pet so right. if you if you your pet is uh, on a balanced and pet uh, balanced pet food then definitely uh, your pet is uh, getting enough omega 6 and omega 3 fatty acids okay if the if the pet is not on a uh, balanced diet then of course you can give the supplement okay right yeah so uh, even when uh, let's say for example my dog is being fed on a commercial dog food are there specific reasons to supplement this supplement any kind of minerals and proteins and uh, you know vitamins and anything no there is no requirement so they, any pet food they are made by uh, made after many research they have to do uh, they have to get uh, um, uh, certification from certain uh, right. bodies like afco or fedf afco is an american uh, right. body and fedf is a european body so the, you can't make a pet food just like that okay so there are certain specifications for that so right. they are complete and balanced okay otherwise if it is not complete and balanced they will write it as supplementary there are some okay. uh, pet foods available in, uh, abroad where they mention it is supplementary and okay. in, in complete balance that they will write it as complete pet food okay okay so if which you, means if, if you, you yeah if you feed a complete pet food there is no need to give extra supplements see okay. there are many people who uh, just gives multivitamins continuously to their pets so actually right. um, it is not going to help it is not going th- there may not be any harm but there is okay. no use also okay okay now and uh, and, yeah. and one more one more point i want to add uh, there are, in india i have seen many people they will be feeding their pet with the pet food com- mm-hmm. on as per the rational requirement and apart from that they will be also giving calcium supplements calcium yes. is the most most important supplement which causes damage okay. in india okay so calcium is one mineral which on when they are fed on excess it can cause skin deficiency uh, it can cause zinc deficiencies right it it interrupts the absorption of zinc and right. this zinc is very important to keep the moisture content of the skin whether i am black we are white our skin is shiny because of the moisture content and right. zinc is responsible for this right. and zinc is also important to uh, important for immunity to produce yeah. antibodies Okay. and for wound healing so th- because of this calcium incre- increase in uptake this uh, problem happens okay yeah so uh, you know uh, typically i think calcium is uh, by far the most sold supplement food supplement in india and uh, we see that any kind of issues you go to a vet in the early stages of a dog's life uh, it is pretty 100% sure that you know they are prescribe the calcium syrup or you know something like that and it goes without saying for everyone and i think now i think it is standard uh, default setting in everyone's mind that as soon as i get a puppy i need to feed them with calcium so that bones develop and things like that so what are the uh, adverse effects that you've seen of uh, feeding excessive calcium and i don't see anyone testing any levels they just decide that okay let's come supplement calcium let's give vitamin e let's give this and that and everything and a lot of times there are a lot of human vitamins being given as well you know medication available at a regular uh, uh, medical store um, at a regular me- pharmacy so uh, how does dosage help how does this excess uh, affect the dog actually as i mentioned uh, one thing is it cause adverse effect on the skin that is mm-hmm. the first point so and second thing is that we believe that uh, deficiency of calcium can cause skeletal problems 
Right. But in India, but in India, most of the time, uh, ex because of excess, it mm. may cause uh, skin problems. So, could you would you then believe that in India there are we are you know we we are covered with skin issues all through. Everyone's pet has got dry skin, dandruff, you know, all kinds of uh, hair loss and all sorts of things. Do you think this possibly could be a reason for that excessive calcium in dogs? Uh, might be a reason. Might be one of the reasons. Right, I, I, and I think it is uh, uh, very difficult to tell that uh, it, this might be a reason because, as I mentioned, that uh, only four percentage of the pets are on pet food. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. Irrespective of whether they are on pet food or otherwise, they anyone who's supplementing calcium might be being too generous with the calcium they are feeding, and that might be coming in the way of absorption of zinc. Right. See, uh, this is a debatable topic. Okay. Yeah. No, no. I'm but saying we, yeah. we can never be sure of the quantities that anyone it, is feeding. It, but it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends upon the uh, pet parent who is feeding the cat, uh, cat or a dog. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they stick on to the um, recommended levels by the veterinarian, it may be uh, it will help. If okay. they feed in excess, then definitely this might be a problem. All right. Could you tell us a little bit about glucosamine and is that uh, present in all dog foods and is that uh, is that I think is one of the popular supplements world over? So, uh, you know, how, do, how, how much of glucosamine is present in all dog foods and is it required for all ages of dogs? Yeah, it is required for all ages of dogs. So mm -hmm. normally nowadays all pet food, every pet food, they contain glucosamine. I believe that uh, the values are between minimum 1200 mg per kg. Okay, uh, yeah. uh, mg per kg of pet food or uh, mg per kg of the dog's weight? Pet food. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, I think we will just run through some of the questions that uh, we have uh, got from uh, the audience. Uh, there are some, there is a question around uh, Farmina has uh, dry food with orange in it for cats. Isn't citrus fruits toxic is toxic for them? No, there is no study saying that uh, orange is toxic for a dog for a dog or a cat. Okay, what does orange deliver for a dog or a cat? So uh, it is an antioxidant. Generally, it is an antioxidant. Generally, okay. vit vitamin C can be produced inside the uh, dog. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, but. Uh, this vitamin uh, here it uh, gives additional antioxidant properties. It's meant for antioxidant properties. Okay, uh, we have a question from Yamika. Uh, she wants to know the balance of omega three and six fatty acids in the dog's diet. How to achieve that in different protein types? Example, chicken diet. So, along with chicken, uh, is there a possibility of adding something else to achieve the balance? I think earlier in our conversation we so spoke she, about. They, she wanted to uh, check whether she is giving only chicken. Chicken yes. And, yes. and she wanted to add omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Yes. Okay. Yes. See, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, see, it is very difficult for you to ration omega-3 and omega-6. But okay. I can tell you that omega-3 is, uh, uh, if uh, if you look at the source of omega-3 fatty acids, you can see fish oil. Fish oil ranks number one. Okay. And then comes uh, flaxseed oil or linseed oil. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, and for omega six, for omega six fatty acids, uh, you can add. Uh, we can add any so. Uh, we can add any vegetable oils like right. sunflower oil or soya oil. We can add. Okay, and uh, but I would, but I would, I, I think she is the one who asked about uh, atopic dermatitis in her dog. No, right? she's not the one with atopic dermatitis. Okay, no. okay, okay, that's okay. Uh, we have a question from Swapneel Mittal about what fruits and vegetables are commonly allergic to dogs as well as fruits and vegetables you would recommend which are good for dogs. Uh, and I have another question. Even as a human being, I don't eat too many fruits and vegetables. I'm uh, perfectly on uh, all right on animal source protein and fat. Uh, how important is really fruits and vegetables for dogs? See, they are, uh, fruits and vegetables are recommended for only fibers. Okay. Yeah, because fiber is one aspect which is important for a dog or a cat. Mm -hmm. Because fibers are the prebiotic. They are okay. the they are the one which give uh, which are the food for the bacteria in the gut. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, I I have not seen any fruits or vegetables which are 
creating any allergy but i can say, tell you that grapes grapes and raisins are toxic for uh, uh, toxic for dogs and mm-hmm. similar it can cause uh, uh, renal failure kidney failure and okay. similarly onions and garlics they are toxic for dogs because even garlic they, yeah garlic and order, uh, uh, onion are toxic for dogs on long term it may cause uh, hemolytic anemia hemolytic oh. anemia means see in uh, blood we have a uh, red blood cells w uh, white blood cells so mm-hmm. red blood cell is responsible for carrying oxygen right. okay hemoglobin so mm-hmm. this red blood cell will get uh, it will bro- it will break and it may cause anemia or it may cause uh, deficiency of oxygen okay yeah all right uh, we have a question again uh, uh, from one of our viewers for hair loss what can we add to our dog's diet is there anything specific that you can do to that magical see, looking hair growth or see, prevent hair see, loss and promote hair growth see this is the biggest mistake which we as a pet parent do okay whenever there is a uh, hair loss hair loss is it, this topic itself is like an ocean it okay. might be because of many reasons it might be because of a bacteria it might be because of a tick it might be because of a mite there are some mites which are fungal infections yeah there are some mites mites means they are microscopic microscopic yeah. ticks okay so some mites are commonly present in the body of a dog mm-hmm. but when the immunity level goes down it it will cause problems mm-hmm. okay like we say demodicosis demodex okay, okay. So, so there are n number of reasons the so, food cannot do a magic okay unless and until you identify the cause and treat it and for yeah. the treatment as a general thumb rule it will take minimum 6 weeks okay if it is if it is food allergy it will take more than 8 weeks and mm-hmm. otherwise otherwise it will take minimum 6 weeks okay if it is really important to identify the cause treat it and food is always a support for skin diseases right. and food also plays a very important role because as i said uh as i mentioned that uh, every whenever there is an infection whenever there is a skin problem definitely the skin layers are going to be affected okay. so you how you how to repair it you how to make sure that all nutrients are replaced so food okay. is a major major thing but food itself is not a solution okay so we'll come back to this question that i posted but before that let me just clarify something a bit more on the omega 3 omega 6 so uh, you brief to me that uh, you know omega 6 is the uh, protection layer and omega 3 is the repair layer or uh, uh, plays the part of the repairing right yes. so in case if there is so uh, amongst products available in the market or even in dog food do you have food specific for me- maintenance and repairs separately definitely yes all maintenance all maintenance pet food they okay. have high amount of omega 6 fatty acids and they, okay. yeah and they are meant for uh, maintaining the skin coat maintaining okay. the skin. and okay. all the skin related diets for example uh, hypoallergenic uh, uh, fish and potato in farmina okay. wet life ultra hypo in farmina they are recommended uh, they have more omega 3 fatty acids so which enables repair which enables repair and this is these are for certain period of time after okay. that you should shift to some products okay. for which helps in skin support for example we have products called as nnd kinova kinova in nnd this is yeah. a functional diet kinova uh, right. for skin and coat which okay. comes with which comes with uh, a duck or okay. coil as a source okay. of protein okay. one product okay. is duck one product with coil along okay. with these product uh, proteins we have uh turmeric and uh, we have coconut which are okay. important for okay, okay. so we, in the, in these skin related products after treatment when the when you are giving a skin related products the omega 6 levels will be high okay yeah thank you for that clarity I, uh, we i had never thought of this uh, in that way but anyway we'll come to this question during the treatment of hookworm problem is there any particular food that you would suggest the or uh, first thing is you have to deworm it okay and mm-hmm. along with deworming you have to give a product which has highest biological value okay highest biological value i will say that uh, there are uh, the products which contains meat as a most uh, a high source uh, which contains meat as the major ingredient you can give those products okay okay so if to identify the uh, quality of a product it is very important uh, as a pet parent to read the label because uh-huh. as per law uh, as per law the uh, labels uh, the ingredients are arranged 
in a descending order okay okay so the first ingredient means it is in a higher quantity higher so quantity just, yeah so you just uh, look at the uh, how many are animal source proteins are But available would you say that any specific diet needs to be followed or she can deworm the dog and continue on a regular diet that she is she feeding can, uh, of she she can do uh, go with a regular diet but okay. the thing is that with, with it should be it should have high biological value okay i have a very very important question which is also to do with myths around uh, kibble food so uh, the question here is isn't dog kibble said to cause issues with skin because it's dehydrated at very high temperature no I, so could you uh, explain further so i think uh, See, hydration uh, in the food does not have a role to play with the condition of the skin no uh, it every, is every, every every pet food they uh, they are mandatorily they are mentioning that give enough water along yes. with the dry along with the dry, right. the dry there is a difference between a dry food and a wet food in okay. wet food you can also choose wet food but the problem is wet food contains 75 percentage of moisture they are also complete and balanced okay okay but they are not energy dense okay okay in dry food they are made they are in, in this uh, any dry food the moisture content will be less than 10 percentage okay. less than 10 percentage that is the norm and it would be energy rich but okay. as a pet parent every, every as a pet parent we should always fee, uh, give extra water okay okay and as a pet as a uh, pet food company every pet food company also insists that give ad libitum water right. along with the pet food right I, i think divya you can go back on this conversation after the live ends because uh, we have had some discussions around omega 3 and omega 6 which kind of contributes to the maintenance of the skin and coat uh, you will find it in the earlier part of the discussion and we have another question from nikhil gupta who's okay. feeding wet life farmina hi, ultra hypoficient potato since 3 years is that a food that needs to be fed for 3 years or uh, does he need to consult a vet and change into a maintenance diet See, it depends upon your pet so, uh, i don't know what is the condition of the pet mm -hmm. very few veterinarians uh, for some pets they recommend uh, uh, products like uh, farmina ultra hypo for your information ultra hypo is a product with hydrolyzed proteins okay so this yeah uh, we this discussed it in the earlier portion yeah. and which is why i'm bringing it as a follow up question because yeah. you said it should be fed for a uh, limited period under supervision he's yeah. been feeding it, it for 3 years in some pets which have recurrent uh, pruritis recurrent okay. pruritis it might be because of multiple reasons it might be also because of a combined infection of atopy and uh, uh, food allergy okay right. so in those cases in some cases vets recommend to it for a lifelong okay but generally we say that uh, it should be for maximum 8 to 12 okay it uh, depends yes. on the condition of the dog Okay, is fish oil the best source of omega, or do you have other sources for omega three, six, etc.? Uh, well, fish oil is the best source. Best okay. source. Apart from uh, fish oil, we have alternative soils like as uh, uh, flax seed, linseed, krill, okay. krill oil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is also a question whether um, do manufacturers use cold rolled or refined vegetable oils? Does that make a difference, really? Uh, and no makes no difference no okay and uh, yes, there yes. is also uh, hi rushi eh? uh, and uh, sorry you want to go back to the earlier question no 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 you just continue uh, okay uh, rushi is a dear friend and uh, he has a question can we give coconut oil in diet daily how much ml for 30 kg is recommended i think uh, the precursor to this is if you are feeding commercially produced uh, balanced pet food there is nothing that is required to be added to the diet uh, is mm -hmm. this is part of the earlier discussion but in case if you would need to add coconut oil what would you recommend uh, i will i am not sure about the dosage of a coconut oil Okay, okay. I'll uh, come, uh, come back after the session. Okay, I think you can come back, and these comments are always available. And just for everyone to know that you can just post your questions on these comments, and I, either of us could come back and answer those in comments, even though uh, our live session ends here. Thank you very much for joining us.
Uh, I hope we were able to do justice, at least touching upon some of these topics on uh, food-related allergies and supplements and the need or uh, uh, the unnecessity of certain supplements. Uh, definitely, I think we learned a good lesson on calcium supplements, which is widely in use in India. Uh, and that could very well be the secret to a lot of dry skin that we see uh, in our dogs in India. And we struggle with grooming those dogs and, you know, worry about it. Thank you so much. I, I, I also <laughs> want to add up yeah, yeah. point. Yeah. As a pet parent, it is very important uh, for us uh, if we want to do justice for our pet. So uh, please keep in mind for treatment of for any treatment of skin allergy, it will take up maximum time. If, if it is a food allergy, minimum it will take 12 weeks of time. And if it is uh, any other, uh, the cause is anything else, it will take minimum of six weeks. So as a pet parent, be patient, be, uh, do whatever your vet says, follow the diet, strictly follow the diet. Whenever you are following a hydrolyzed diet, please keep in mind that there might be, uh, you should not feel that my pet is like a snack. To de One piece of uh -huh. snack can cause the damage. One right. piece of it can also cause the damage. So be strict, be strict in the diet, follow the protocols, whichever your vet says. Right. Uh, so this is, this is the thing which I wanted to convey. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And uh, just as a parting note, I have a little small question to ask you. We feed all uh, the right food very patiently, carefully chosen, wet prescribed, and then comes all the treats that comes into the picture. Do you think treats should be given or isn't it absolutely much more safer to use the same kibbles as treats to be on the safe you side? Can use, see, we can use the same kibble as a treat. That is See, that is the best part. So, but uh, if you wanted to really uh, give a treat, you please mm -hmm. check what are the ingredients. If it okay. is coming from a, if it is coming from a beef, there, right. I think uh, in the pet uh, pet industry there are some treats which are made up of hydrolyzed proteins. Also, you can right. feed that also to your pet. Okay. So sometimes not a problem, but if you make it a habit, it is going to be a problem. I think we should come back on another session on treats. Till then. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Anish, for joining us and giving us this wonderful insight. Hope to see you soon. Thank, thank you, Fabina, and thank you, uh, Dr. Anish. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. And please post Bye your then. questions on the comments. We can always come back and answer these questions. Uh, thank you, and see you soon. At thank, our you. Next thank you. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Fort, and thank you, Cherian.